Introduction. Wilma Rudolph calmly walked to the starting line. Wilma! The crowd yelled. It was 1960. She was running in the Olympics. People were shouting Wilma's name because she was fast. They didn't care that she was African American or poor. Here in Rome, Italy, Wilma was just another athlete. A good one. Under the picture in blue it reads, People called Wilma Rudolph the fastest woman in the world. Wilma Rudolph won three gold medals at the 1960 Summer Olympics. That was amazing. Getting there at all was even more amazing. When Wilma was a child, her doctor said she would never walk. Wilma worked hard. If she failed at something, she worked harder. Being a top athlete was only one of her goals. She also worked to help others. This made her a true winner. In blue next to the picture, it says, Wilma Rudolph was the first American woman to win three gold medals at the Olympic Games. Chapter 1. Wilma's Childhood Wilma Rudolph was born on June 23, 1940 in Tennessee. As a child, Wilma was often sick. She caught the measles and the chicken pox. Her parents didn't have money for a doctor. But Wilma was lucky. Her family took good care of her. When Wilma was four, she got a disease called polio. Polio made thousands of people sick. They suffered greatly. Some could no longer walk. Wilma couldn't use her left leg at all. In the United States at that time, segregation was the law. Black people could not use the same hospitals as white people. The closest hospital for African Americans was far away from Wilma's house. Wilma and her mother took the long bus ride there every week for treatment. Polio vaccine. Today, most babies get a polio vaccine, a medicine that prevents polio. Polio was virtually eliminated from the United States by 1979. One day, the doctor said that Wilma would never walk again. Her mother flinched. She said that Wilma would walk. Years later, Wilma was asked about this. She said, I decided to believe my mother. Wilma worked hard doing exercises to make her leg strong. Finally, she could walk with a brace on her leg, but she still couldn't run and play. So she worked even harder to make herself well. Chapter 2. Skeeter By the time Wilma was 12 years old, she no longer needed to wear the brace. Her leg was strong again. She wouldn't have to hear the muttering and snickering of children making fun of her brace. Now that she was able to run, Wilma ran all the time. She raced everyone. The other children gaped at her as she whizzed by. It almost felt like an insult. She was so fast. Next to the picture, it says, Once Wilma started running, she never stopped. Wilma joined the basketball team at school. The coach called her Skeeter. He told her, You're little, you're fast, and you always get in my way. Finally, Wilma got to play. She was almost six feet tall by this time, and she was fast. In her first game, she scored 32 points. This was no fluke. Wilma quickly became the star player. She joined the track team, too. She easily won every race. Then her team competed in a track meet at Tuskegee University. Wilma lost every race. She was shocked. She thought she was the best. She went back to training. Words from a winner. Winning is great, sure, but if you are really going to do anything in life, the secret is learning how to lose. If you can pick yourself up after a crushing defeat and go on to win again, you are going to be champion one day. Wilma Rudolph. Chapter 3, Tiger Bell. Ed Temple, the coach of the Tennessee State University girls track team, saw Wilma run. He invited her to train with his track team. The team was called the Tiger Bells. At first, Wilma's mother was worried about Wilma leaving home. Then she realized that this was Wilma's chance to go to college. If running is going to do that, then be the best you can be, she told Wilma. Wilma did well on the Tiger Bells. At one meet, Wilma ran in nine races and won them all. Wilma tried out for the 1956 Olympic team. She was 16 years old. She made the team. The games were in Melbourne, Australia. The people in Wilma's hometown collected money to help her pay for her trip. At the 1956 Olympics, Wilma competed in the 200 meter race. She lost that race, but her team won a bronze medal in a relay race. Under the picture it reads, Wilma, second from the left, and her teammates posed with their bronze medals after placing third in the 4x100 meter relay at the 1956 Olympic Games. A bronze medal still isn't all that bad for a high school kid from Tennessee, Wilma Rudolph. 
Chapter 4. American Heroine. Four years later, Wilma was back. At the 1960 Olympics in Rome, Italy, Wilma's speed was legendary. Don't blink or you'll miss her, people would say. During the 100-meter race, the crowd began screaming. Wilma looked behind her. She was way ahead of everyone. She won her first gold medal. During the 200-meter race, she told herself, nobody can beat me. And she won her second gold medal. Next to the picture, it says, Wilma was presented with her first gold medal on August 3rd, 1960. On the top of page 11 under the picture in blue, it says, Wilma was honored with a parade in Nashville, Tennessee. The relay race wasn't so easy. Wilma almost dropped the baton. She saw runners race ahead of her. With a great burst of speed, Wilma caught up to the other runners. Then she flew past them all. The crowd roared. Wilma had won her third gold medal. Her hometown had a huge celebration for their Olympic heroine. They had a parade and a banquet. But this celebration was special for another reason. Blacks and whites celebrated together. Chapter 5 Wilma's legacy. After the Olympics, everybody wanted to see Wilma race, but Wilma had reached one dream. She turned to her next dream. Wilma had learned many lessons in her life. Now she wanted to help others. She started the Wilma Rudolph Foundation in 1981. The foundation gave free coaching to boys and girls. It also helped them work toward getting good grades. Under the picture in blue it says, Wilma worked to help others. Along the bottom of pages 12 and 13, it is the Wilma Rudolph timeline. It shows when she was born to the date she died and the things she accomplished. Take time to look at this after reading the book. On page 13, in blue under the picture it reads, Wilma shared her experiences so that other young women have a chance to reach their dreams. Wilma helped other women athletes. She gave speeches. She told women to believe in themselves. She knew it wasn't always easy. Wilma herself had to rise above insult and prejudice. In 1994, Wilma Rudolph became very sick with cancer. She died on November 12, 1994. Under the picture in blue, it reads, In 2004, the U.S. Postal Service issued a postage stamp honoring Wilma Rudolph. Wilma still inspires people today. Each year, the Women's Sports Foundation gives the Wilma Rudolph Courage Award to a woman athlete who shows the kind of strength Wilma did. Wilma Rudolph was truly a lady of gold. James A. Hefner, president of Tennessee State University. Wilma Rudolph graduated from Tennessee State University in 1963.